Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Monday, April the 8th, the year is 2024. Let's talk trading. Weekly open and gap with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and different from Walmart. Hey, Walmart, are you ready for the eclipse? <laughs> well, I live too far away from it, but. <laughs> and I know that you had, you had said that there was some conspiracy theories out there and stuff, but, you know, I'm not into conspiracy <laughs> theories either. So, so, am I ready for the eclipse? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yes, in the sense that. Whatever happens, happens. I'm okay. <laughs> but the re but no, I haven't made any special plans for it. <laughs> yeah, so let's just re I was going to say, need to remind traders we're on the second trading week here in April. W risk management. Never lose more than you're willing to lose on one single trade. In fact, um, I guess a couple of videos ago, um, I had mentioned something about, you know, taking the two pips or something, and somebody asked me, well, what should the stop loss be? I go, I said, well, you know, that's a function of uh, your position size and, and the amount you want to risk. Um, you just can't throw a, a, a stop loss out there without knowing, you know, at least one of the other two. Yep, you need to, you need to go and figure, figure that out. And, you know, it, you know, we had talked about this maybe, well, well over a year ago, maybe close close to two years ago, and maybe we ought to go revisit it at some point in time. But I like to keep things simple, you know. And I try to develop a, a KISS method. And what I mean by that is that I just go and I know how far I'm willing to go and, you know, where I'm willing to put my stop loss and where I'm willing, where I want to go and put my TPs. And I have it all preset. My, my, the number of lots that I trade does not change. <clears throat> Excuse me. But because it doesn't change, it makes it very, very simple. And I simplify the method by making sure that I'm always, always, always under leveraged. I'm not in a situation where I'm right at the brink of what I'm allowed to go trade based on what I'm willing to lose. And so for that reason, I'm okay. I don't have to sit there, you know, with all these calculators and say, okay, on this particular trade, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and place a bet here and I'm going to risk, you know, 3.27 lots, you know, of course, to some calculation. No, that's just, for me, that's just too difficult. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go and say, I'm going to go and place a trade here for X lots, period, done, you know, and it's going to be that way. And, you know, beginning when I was trying to build my account up, sure, I had to go change that number X, but what it was, I didn't change it daily. What I did is I changed it at the end of each week. As I built up more and more capital, I'd change it at the end of the week. And if I had a bad week where I actually took a loss that week, well, then I had to go and reduce it a little bit, you know. But that's how I do it. I just make it simple. And if it turns out that that means my stop loss is going to be way too short for where I think it could run against me, well, maybe that's a trade that I just don't take, you know, and if that's what your method is saying. By the way, that 40 that I said we were going to bust through, we busted through. We're almost up to the 45 now. Yeah. So your launch pad seems to be launching. Yeah. In fact, I've got the weekly chart up, and uh, the dashboard shows that all those uh, weekly open gaps have filled. And then if we uh, zoom out to the monthly, we can see we're in the uh, uh, upper wick zone of the previous month because the previous month was almost a doji, so... We're pretty much in, in that wick zone right there. And, and we're putting in the opening range for the week. We broke through the opening range for the month at uh, looks like 26.41, that high. And we're still in the opening range for the year. And for the year, we're 77 pips below the yearly open right now. And we're 20 pips above the monthly open. And it looks like the uh, weekly open and the daily open um, are uh, right at the monthly open. <laughs> Went right back to the monthly open there. Yep. At 45, when we hit that, it actually extended the range for the, the, uh, the, range for the day. 
it actually put a new high in for the day. So it uh, rejected off of that and came back down. But, I mean, once again, we have a day where it's very, very compressed. We had only 26 pips. Now we're up to the 32 pip range for the day. And once again, we're talking about these days where everything seems to be very, very compressed. Right. And, you know, look, I'm looking at the daily and the, uh, we had an inside bar six days ago and that high was at 26.44. So it tried to, well, it broke out, but only by on a pip, 0.9 to be uh, precise. So we're still in that inside bar range. We're in the inside bar range of two weeks ago and we're in the inside bar range of three months ago. So we've got inside bar action across the board on the pound here and it looks like there's a lot of inside bar action um, across the other pairs too i can see interestingly, it interestingly enough we don't have any any news of any consequence uh today or tomorrow on the pound the dollar and the euro uh, but wednesday thursday and friday there's lots of red news coming out well, something so must be going on with the Swiss franc because the Australian Swiss franc uh, has a big, it's the range leader at 101 pips and the pound franc is at 100. And those are the only two pairs of, with 100 pips or more of range right now. Let's see. Um, on the, the only thing that's going on in the franc is that um, the bank chairman, uh, for, for Switzerland, he's speaking um, at 11.15 my time, so that's in two hours, actually an hour and a half. Otherwise, it's all yellow. Yeah, and so looking at this, kind of interesting. yeah, I see that the uh, dollar yen is back over 151. It looks like uh, it almost hit 152, so it might be about time to start thinking shorts again. Have to wait and yeah. see. Yeah, so, but don't just go short. Make sure you see a pattern there. Of see, course, you know, yeah. Put two, put two things together, you know? That's yeah. one thing, but, you know, we got to put out there, have a technical reason as well as a, uh, yeah, an observable reason. Yeah. I oh, remember when we did the boot camp video series, a trader was asking if that's still uh, viable in today's market. And I believe the answer is yes. Yeah, I would say so. It's just that the only thing, the only thing is that you know it's like what we talked about. I, I believe on Friday or Thursday last week, and that is that you know the methods, are, the methods are the methods. It's just that what you may have to do is adapt based on what the markets are doing right now. That doesn't mean the method changes. It just means that you may have to sit there and figure out, okay, you know, when do I go? When when do I pull out? When do I go in? You know, in terms of how many tips you're trying to accumulate. You know, shorten probably shortening up. You know your stop losses a little bit. You know, and at the same time, you got to be shortening up your TPs as well. You know, you may have to do those type of things. But yeah, that I don't. You know, it's sort of like you know we had talked uh, you know offline about whether or not the Walmart market would work. You know, and because we haven't talked about that in a long time. And the reality is, you know, I went back and looked, and yeah, it would work. But the thing is. It wouldn't work the way we presented it, you know, three years ago. What do I mean by that? Well, three years ago, you know, every hour was a 35 pip hour, you know. Well, guess what? You know, I'll read off some ranges to you. You know, we got this hour was 21. That's the big hour for the entire day. We got 15, 16, 13, 13, 14, 11, 10, you know, and that go, you know, go all the way back into the Asian session. You know, we don't have those. So what does that mean? Instead of going for a 10, you know, 10, 15, 20 pips. No, you got to be going here for three to five pips, which means that you got to sit there and figure out, okay, uh, well, you know, if I'm doing that, I'm shortening that side out. I'm going to be shortening out the, uh, the stop loss side as well. So will it work? Sure, it'll work. But understand, it's, you know, you got to go and adapt to what's actually happening in the market at this time. You know, eventually, you know, hopefully, you know, the market will go back to where it's having typical days of, 95 to 120 steps a day, you know, um, and as long as you, and then you can go back to using those methods again, the same way that they were presented then. So what does that mean? You got to use some of your brain cells, guys. 
<laughs> yeah, and in fact, since we're kind of revisiting methods, uh, another trader was uh, said, "Hey, you guys talked about straddle, and they wanted us to explain uh, the straddle, like on the NFP." Yeah. Now, there were a couple ways of doing it, but the easiest way that people did it was what they would do is they put in pending orders right before the news drop, and they would basically put in a pending order on each side of the price on them for a buy and for a sell. And they usually put it somewhere at five, 10 steps away from the actual price. Um, and what they would then do is they put a TP out there, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, sometimes even 60 pips away, you know, and, uh, and then what they would do is they would hope that they get one. And, you know, and, you know, the one, if, uh, you know, they would, the best thing would be is that you know, both of them would be triggered and you could actually grab pips on both sides because price would move. Who you knows when a big news event happens, you know, like we even happened on Friday with NFP. If you watched it, you know, it went and um, it ran up first, you know, it ran up 10, 15 pips and then it ran down, you know, and then it came back up again. Now, in the old days, when it did those run ups and run downs, it would run 30. 30 to 60 pips, and sometimes even 100 pips. And so the idea was just to go and grab those pips real quick. Well, the brokers didn't like that. And so what they did was they started making the spreads excessively large. So what would happen is as soon as the news dropped, you, were, you, you find yourself in a trade in both directions immediately because the spread was made to cover what people were straddling. Okay. And so, you know, it was that thing where well, that didn't do me a bit of good. The only thing I'm going to do now is pay for, pay for, uh, pay for whatever the, uh, the, the spread was on both sides because I'm going to take a loss on probably on both sides of this thing. Well, you know, and sometimes they would even, you know, even cut, uh, they haven't done this in a while, but they even at some points actually would make the, the spread so big it was covering where people's TPs were or where their stop losses were. So you immediately triggered into a trade with, and then immediately triggered into a, a loss. And sometimes on both sides, again, of the, uh, of the, uh, of both sides of the, uh, the opening price of that particular candle. So the next thing you know, you've now taken a loss of 30, let's say you're putting a uh, stop loss out there at 30 pips. You take a stop loss of 30 pips in both directions, same time, you know, and so, it kind of put an end to that, and uh, you know, I know that, uh, um, for instance, the you know the prop firms, they most of the prop firms, even the ones that say that you're allowed to news trade, they actually will go and say in the fine print, and you read it, you read the contract that they make you sign, um, they'll actually go and tell you that straddle trading is a, is not considered to be a a method that that's uh, that's allowable under their their rules. So you know. For whatever reasons, they don't like you doing it, and so you can't really do it anymore. Now, even on Friday, when we only had a, the range from Friday was only 74 pips, you know, and as as small of a move that NFP was on Friday, you know, I think my my uh, my spread went to, you know, somewhere between seven and seven and eight pips, if I recall correctly, you know, and typically speaking, my my spread, because I'm on an ECN, my spread, my spread right now is zero on the pound dollar, you know, and so it usually gets up to maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and it was sitting out there, sitting out there, you know, seven, eight, nine pips, somewhere around that, you won't recall exactly. That's, you know, that's a, that's a huge difference. It sure is. And you know what? <laughs> the fastest 15 minutes in trading is over. So, traders, I hope that answered your questions and I hope maybe you picked up a tip or two there and be careful out there during the eclipse because you know you don't know what what these crazies are up to and when you come back to your trading platform always remember and never forget it's not what you trade it's how you trade it so go out there and drain the banks this is the rumpled one over and out <laughs>